Good morning, world. This is Pastor John Fisherman Cromwell, and uh, of course, without saying another word, Chris. Come hello. over here, Chris, and say hello to the world. Come around here. Come <laughs> around here. Come on. <laughs> We're in this together. Yeah, it's just not me. We can't do this without this guy. Yeah. This is Chris. He's an awesome man. Yeah, he knows what he's doing, okay. how to do it, and where he's going. Okay, Lung? Yeah, okay, Lung. Okay, Lung. Hallelujah. Maputi. <laughs> he's a, a great guy. He's a good friend, very good friend, very kind hearted, and a very good man. Okay, so this morning, we're going to talk about religion. Yes, religion. But the topic is this, what is wrong with religion and being religious? Okay, so what is wrong with religion? You might say, there's nothing wrong with it. Well, let's have a look, shall we? So let's find out what is wrong with religion and uh, being religious. First of all, we've got to uh, ask who created religion? Who started up religion? Where did it start and when did it start? Well, basically, it was 326 BC. Chris, did you know that? <coughs> what is and, the meaning um, of religion? By a guy called Farnabes of Iberia. Now, all religion has been created by sinful man. God did not create religion. So we've got to start there. So, what is the difference between religion and Christianity? And I'm talking about true Christianity. Because there's Christian and there's Christian. Okay? In our world today. Because the word Christian has been misused and abused. Okay? So, religion is based on doing good works in order to please God and to please other people. To show that you are better than them. That you are good enough to get to heaven. Chris, is anybody good enough to get to heaven? Chris is very quiet. He's gone very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, Chris is thinking. He'll probably come up with some deep answer. Yeah. Well, just while he's thinking... What do you think? No. I think the same no thing. one is good enough to there's no exceptions for anybody no one's good enough to get to heaven because we're all same thing. living in sin yeah. and we as Christians have been forgiven of our sins because we repented from our sins and so that's why we are called Christian because we are followers of the no Lord one Jesus. is qualified to go yes unless so Christianity, that's true Christianity, is based on God's grace. God's grace, that is God's undeserved forgiveness that he gives to us. Undeserved forgiveness to a lost and dying world. So when God forgives you, he forgives and forgets. So... He gave us Jesus Christ to die on the cross and rise again so that we can be forgiven. There's no forgiveness without that. So religion um, reveals who man is. Re religion reveals who man is. But true Christianity... It reveals who God is. See the difference? Um, things may look familiar on the inside with religion and Christianity, but are radically different on the, on the outside, I should say, but radically different in the inside. <coughs> One opposes the other. Religion opposes Christianity. Religion opposes the God of the Bible. Now we're getting down to the, the, the truth of this now. I have to be straight. 
you cannot beat around the bush, you cannot compromise, you've got to say uh, the truth. Christ is calling you. I have a question, brother. Did you have a question? You said that religion is different from Christianity, right? Uh, could you consider Christianity as religion? Definitely not. Because when, you, when people say, let's say, Google it, religions of the world, and then what will appear is Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism. It's considered, or it is just, just... This is the world's point of view. Uh -huh. They have it wrong. It's not biblically correct. So Christianity is not religion? Absolutely not. What's that? It's a relationship. Relationship, it's an option, it's, it's a choice. It's a choice to follow the God of the Bible or to follow the gods of religion. Catholic is religion? Yes. Hinduism is religion? Yes. Buddhism? Yes. Iglesia de Cristo? Yes. Etc., etc. More than 4,000? 4,200 plus, yep. Oh, religions in the world. So many. They cannot forgive us or save us. Okay, so let's have a look. But one of the uh, greatest uh, ironies is that re religious people are in fact not even being close to being Christian. So let's have a look. Where did this word Christian originate from? Well, actually it originated uh, first of all in the book of Acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Um, and uh, it's in verse, um, chapter 11, verse 26. But first of all, I want to go to Peter, first Peter, and say, um, and show you here about, about religion, okay, and about Christianity. So we go to first Peter 4, uh, 15. And it says here, but let none of you suffer, uh, sorry, I better, I better get verse 16. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this in his matter. Suffers, everybody suffers, is persecuted, condemned, um, shot down, you know. If anybody suffers as a Christian, let him be not, not be ashamed. So you see, the disciples were not ashamed. They died for their faith in Jesus. You see, um, heaven is full of people with childlike faith. You can have childlike faith to believe in Jesus. All the disciples, I mean but most of the disciples, died in a horrible death, right? Yes, they were killed because of Cut their faith. Their they neck, were martyred. Uh, the head. But you see, um, hell is full of people with blind faith. Religion is blind faith. In fact, Jesus... Uh, warned his disciples after he rebuked the religious leaders calling them their father was the devil they were liars and thieves and they practiced the devil's ways that's the short story short and um, so Peter said Master you've offended your religious leaders by what you said to them he said ignore them they are blind guides leading the blind astray follow them and you'll fall into the same ditch as they do the ditch of hell so religion is blind it's blind of faith it's not faith in God at all, not the God of the Bible. It's the blind faith that takes them into hell. So when you follow Jesus, that's not blind faith, it's childlike faith that gets you to heaven. Okay, Lang, so let's have a look. Um, now we'll have a look at Acts chapter uh, 11 and verse 20. Acts 11, verse 20. Oops, that's 30. That was quick. Let's have a look. But some of them were from Cyprus and Cyrene. Uh, hang on. Where are we? 11 
sorry, I've got the wrong verse here, but it, it's somewhere there. Um, yeah. Okay, sorry about that, but it's in it's in the, the book of Acts, uh, and uh, that's when they first called Christian. Because before then, they were just called followers of Jesus, followers of Christ, um, or believers, uh, uh, followers of the way. It was called the way then, but um, then uh, they were called Christians. Now let me have a look at another version of the Bible, because sometimes different versions say different things. I have a question, brother, before you continue. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of born-again Christians, right? Yes. And there are a lot of churches Yes. that are called born-again Christians, like Jesus, Blessed Church, like that. Yes. Jesus is Lord. Uh, Word of Hope. They are all uh, born-again Christians, right? What can you say about them? that? Why are so many churches? Well, they are not religions also? No, they're not religions. They're a denomination. Ah, denominations of the born-again Christians. There's many denominations in the born-again Christians. Why, why can't they decide on one, one name? I mean, Because, uh, unfortunately, we are all different. We have all different opinions on teachings and different opinions on the truth, different opinions on this, that, and the other. So, there's... But the Christian basically believes... In Jesus Christ is the only way and to be born again is the only way to get to heaven so they believe in certain doctrines but then they have um, differentiating doctrines a little bit go this way a little bit go that other way but basically they all believe in born the truth again. about being born again so they're born again Christians so that no matter what the name of their church is they're born again they're our brothers and sisters and we'll meet them in heaven okay so that's a good question, Chris, because there Thank are you. You, are, you belong to a church so blessed, right? Yes, church so blessed. And you mm. belong to... So many. So many. <laughs> yeah. Juanito and uh, Jesus Miracle Crusade, like that. Yeah, Jesus Miracle Crusade. Well, there's a lot of different denominations in the Philippines. Yeah, I mean, you even the, the world, even in the U.S., yeah, you've got 115 million population here, so over 50% is born again. So, and there's a lot of denominations, but they're born again denominations. Okay? They're not a religion, they're not a cult, they're not uh, into philosophy. They're born again Christians, and they all have different names of their churches. And some churches. So, they're common, the common uh, thing about this uh, so many names. Is the accepted Christ as Savior? Savior. Lord, yes. Uh, That's those two ministers accepted Christ, yeah. but sometimes they contradict the teachings because somebody founded a new church like that. Yeah. Or, you know, some factions of that original church. Yeah, well, pastors don't agree with each other. And yeah, <laughs> another I know. Pastor That's human the, nature. <laughs> and you see, we're not perfect, and there's no perfect church. If I went to a, a perfect church, if there was one, I'd spoil it. <laughs> there's no perfect church, no perfect person. So we live in a world of imperfection and a world of corruption. But being born again, we're uh, not perfect, we're forgiven, and we're saved. You better create a new church, Fishers of Men Church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, so, uh, hang on for it. What's your topic now? Are you already confused? No, not yet. No, no. So we've got to ask ourselves, Chris, is there enough evidence? Mm. Is there really enough evidence in our lives for others to tell the difference between us being religious or us being Christian? Is there enough evidence? Is there a difference? Is there a difference in our lives? And I'll ask you, if you're a Christian here talking to you now, is there enough evidence in your life that others who are not Christian can tell the difference of you being religious or being Christian? We've got to ask ourselves. So how can we prove to the world that we're different? Because um, here in the Philippines, many, uh, many, many Roman Catholics say we're Christian. Oh, I say to them, are you Roman Catholic Christian, yes sir. Well, actually, 
they can't be. You see, they say, oh, we play the same songs as you, because they copied us. They play the same songs. Um, but, you see, we don't worship idols like the Roman Catholics do, and many religions worship idols, serve them. And the Bible says not to do that, so we don't, because it's, it's um, against God. It's a mockery, an insult to holy God. And they have different doctrines, like the Roman Catholics have, they say there's a place called purgatory in between heaven and hell. That's a lie. They, they have, have the Eucharist and how Mary's and Rosary be confessionary. That's not in the Bible. That's not taught in the Bible. That's man-made traditions. And even Jesus spoke to the religious leaders in his time, saying that you teach as if your religions were from God himself. You hypocrites, he called them. You make out that what you say is true and it comes from God and it doesn't. So meaning, brother, if you go to hell, there's no way for you to, to go to heaven anymore. No. It's you cannot eternity. pray for dead people. Eternity. That's right. So once if you go to hell, you go there forever. Once a person takes his, la- his or her last breath and they're not born again, immediately they go to hell. Immediately. Straight away. That's it. And they've made the wrong choice. So we're going to make the right choice this side of taking our last breath or before Jesus So that's soon. absolute. That's the Bible teaching. And it's plain to see for everybody to see. Especially if you read uh, any Bible with you in front of it. When you read a King James, it's very hard to understand whether these and thousand dies and dines and the two or thereof. It's very hard to understand a lot of that old English language. And you can get confused and mixed up. So if you get a Bible that's got new in front of it, new King James, new Murphy's in it, uh, all those Bibles are new, it's very easy to understand. Saying the sa- there are all these different versions saying the same thing in a different way uh, to cope with the population of believers. So we, we've got to ask ourselves, is there enough evidence Very to prove the answer. difference between being a Christian and being a religious person? Okay? Mm-hmm. So what's the difference? Well, we follow Jesus. We don't follow any popes or any religious leaders. Isn't that right, Chris? Mm-hmm. We don't believe in the Eucharist because when Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. He shed his blood once and for once and for all. And that's it. You don't do a, a traditional service about the shedding of his blood over and over and over and over again every week all over the world in every different Roman Catholic church. That's not true. That's a man, man's tradition. He's not read the Bible. He doesn't understand the Bible. Um, and he's deceiving people and so the world is full of deception that's what the cults and religion is full of deception but Christianity is the only truth because it's Christianity there's the word in there Christ he is the way the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through him so that is a key verse we can only get to heaven through Jesus Christ is that right Chris? Mm-hmm. Yeah. there's a, a man a preacher with the, probably one of the biggest churches in the world, Joel Osteen. He was uh, doing an interview with, um, what's that lady's name in America? Lady? A lady, a very famous lady, just having a great moment. <laughs> he was having a, an interview by this very famous interviewer. Oprah Winfrey? Oprah, Oprah, yes. That's, yeah, that's I can a, see Oprah in your Yeah. Room. <laughs> so he was having an interview with her, and the whole world saw this. And she asked him, is Jesus the only way or are there many ways to get to heaven? He said, well, he said, I've got to be careful what I say about this. I've got to be very careful. He said, but uh, personally, he said, I prefer to follow Jesus, being born again. But there's many, many ways to get to heaven. Now, when I heard him say that, I never listened to him anymore because that's a big lie. Because he has compromised the truth. He's bent the truth because he's too ashamed and, and too ashamed to say that Jesus is the only way. And God, God will reject him. Jesus will reject him because he's rejected 
Jesus by saying that, that other religions, because the Bible specifically says Jesus is the only way. I think Oprah doesn't believe in God. No, no, she's got her she's own. She's an atheist. I saw her in the YouTube. Well, she's supposed but to have her own religion. She, she was interviewed and then she yeah. cried because deep inside her is she don't she doesn't believe in God. Right, because she she's got her own cult going, her own following. She's got a big following, um, and uh, she's take she's taking people to hell. Uh, you know, you know her background. They were just a very poor family. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Maybe she blamed God or whatever. Oh, well, that's that's her <laughs> silly choice. Uh, she needs to repent and, and convert and get saved. Pray for her. Yes. Yeah, so we've got to show others that there's difference, the difference in Christianity. So we read our Bibles daily. We talk to God daily. We preach the gospel daily. We share the gospel with people to save them from going to hell. We go to the born again church. We do Bible studies. We we do a lot of different things. We don't condemn people. We don't hurt people. We're not perfect, but um, we try not to tell a lie. We, we we don't want to hurt anybody, and we we always say we're sorry. We're we're different. We're definitely different. Um, we we'll wear t-shirts to show the difference. We put stickers on our cars to show the difference. There's so many different ways, but by our actions, we'll prove that we're different to the world and different to religious people by our actions, by our Christianity, by loving one another. As Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. And so that's what we do. And that's just very, very basic. We can get into a very deep con conversation about that one. So let's continue. The true Christian has repented from their sins. And uh, they, if they belong to a religion before, a true Christian converts from their religion, no matter what it is. Um, they turn away from their unbelief. Let's take an example of a true Christian. Saul of Tarsus. He became Paul. He, he was a, a really bad guy. Let's have a look at his testimony, shall we, Chris? Let's have a look at his testimony. Um, Acts 22. Let's see if we can get the right scripture this time, eh, mate? <laughs> Acts 22, verse 6 to 8. Now it happened as I journeyed and came near Damascus, Paul says, at about noon, suddenly a great light from heaven shone around me, and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So I answered, Who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Who are you, Lord? And another version says, What can I do for you, Lord? Okay. So here he is, he's converted. Now let's have a look at this. Um, Imagine 2,000 eight, years ago. 15, 16, let's have a look. For you'll be a witness, he was spoke, told, he's told to be a witness to everybody. So you see, Paul, he was a persecutor of Christians. He uh, was a, what would you call, a, a tyrant. He was a, not a God-fearing person. He was religious. He was a persecutor. Uh, he uh, had people tortured and killed. He, he killed so many families. people, right? He killed so many people. Yes, he broke up families. Um, in fact, one of his last things he did was hold the coats of the stone throwers as they threw stones at Stephen. Stephen was the first Christian martyr. He died for his faith. The first Christian who died for his faith was uh, Stephen. And uh, he preached the gospel of the Lord Jesus. And they stoned him to death. And Saul, he held the coats of the stone throwers. 
Who's he on? Yeah, stone him, kill him, kill him, stone him, stone him. And um, that was what he was like. And he became the persecuted, from the persecutor to the persecuted. So there was a big difference with him. This, this Saul, uh, they said, he, he was a persecutor. Now, now we're persecuting him because now he's changed sides. The persecutor and the persecuted now. Yeah, he became the persecuted because he was the persecutor. So it reversed for him. So yes, a lot of evidence. When, when I was in New Zealand for 20 plus years, I preached the gospel on my city street corners with my megaphone and sign box. And uh, I preached there. And they knew that I was not religious. They knew I was Christian because I preached Jesus. I preached repentance and conversion. I preached against religion. I preached against sin. I preached against the things like Jesus did and the apostles did. I did the same kind of preaching as they did. And so people knew that I was Christian, not religious. Because I spoke against religion all the time. I said religion killed Jesus, killed his God's prophets, killed his disciples, still doing it today. Um, so yes, there's enough evidence against me to say that I am Christian and not religious. So and Christian, you were persecuted? I was persecuted in my own city and my own country. I persecuted all the time. I was kicked out of places. I was told to keep quiet. I was... Um, you were not slapped? I was punched. A I punch, was, huh? Yeah, punched in the face. I was spat upon at close range. They threw eggs at me, even used an air gun. They threw lots of water on me over 20 years. It was very cold in the winter. But in the summertime, I said, bring it on, bring it on, because it's hot in the summer. Um, so I was persecuted by my own city people. Um, but you see, it didn't stop me because I wanted them to hear. So what it did do is that it made me preach longer, louder, and more. So during those times, you didn't think of Philippines yet. Your Philippines is a destiny, right? Yes. So no, not yet in your mind? Not when then. You, not back then. Oh, but right? then, then four years before I came here, it was. <laughs> I mean, year, how did you know Philippines? How did you decide? What made you decide to come here? Well, th there's no such thing as a coincidence. So, while I was, I was boarding ships for 14 years nearly every day... Ah, uh, the seamen. The, I was asked seafarers. By, by the seafarers, by the Christian seafarers, come to our church in the Philippines. Come ah, to our church. So. Then they gave me the pastor's address, email, whatever, and I was in contact with all these pastors, asked me to come to, to their church. So, eventually in 2004, I went over to the Philippines. 20 years ago. Yeah, 20 years ago I went to the Philippines for my first trip in Mindanao, the southern island of Mindanao, and then with Pastor Jun de Jesus, who is the pastor, senior pastor of the tribal ministry. And so... In CDO, I, right? CDO? In, in Cagayan de Oro. Yeah, CDO. Yeah, CDO. And so then I, I went over four times again after that until I lived here in 2010. Um, and so we preached to the tribes right across the top of Mindanao and gave them food and the gospel. We gave, brought them big pigs, big bags of rice, uh, fruit and vegetables and um, all these sort of things and, and preached the gospel. And we saw many people converting to Jesus Christ. So they were kind to you, the, the kind. tribes? The tribes? Yes, very kind indeed. Yeah, very kind. One of the tribes we went to, I was the first white person they'd seen mm. in their lives. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were touching me all over like this, and, you know, <laughs> like that. Yeah. What's the color of their skin? Like, yeah. like me, brown? Yeah, and my hair's on my arm. And, oh, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, and I fell in love with the Philippines there, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I've been here now for just over 14 years. I uh, love the Philippines. Okay, so how's our time going, brother? 
Five minutes. We got five minutes. Yeah. Well, we better we better continue this next week. Chris. Same topic. Yeah, the same topic. I just I put a line. I put a line where we where we stop so we know where to start yeah. next week. Okay. It's, it's, it's better that sometimes you have a conversation, asking questions, to make it more live, like. Yes, it's a more, pity. It's a pity we couldn't do question and answer. Yeah, more you know, more lively and more interesting. It's like a pity. I'm asking you about the de denomination. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing so is, the Baptist is different. The Baptists are born, are born again Christians. No. Huh? Baptists are born again Christians. How about the Pentecostal? Born again Christians. Also? Yes. The UCCP, United Church of Christ, is also born again? United uh, Church of Christ in the Philippines, UCCP. As far as I know, the United Pentecostal Church. Yeah, in Okibuloy, he used to be a Pentecostal. Okibuloy? Used to uh, be a he, Pentecostal he's a, he's pastor. He's a false, false teacher. Kimberly, no, but we have only got five minutes, Chris. Yeah, and we've only got five minutes. Continue. <laughs> okay, so if you want to be a true Christian, and if you want to make sure that you go to heaven, then you must follow Jesus Christ. You must stop following your religion, your philosophy, or you must, if you're an atheist, you've got to start to believe. So everybody who believes in Jesus shall be saved, the Bible says. So to be saved, the Bible says, to confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, you will be saved. So then, if you want to be saved, you want to make sure um, that, uh, that you're going to heaven, you've got to repent from your sins and convert from your religion and your philosophy. So but in doing that, we, we pray. And this is the, if you want to make sure you go to heaven, pray with me right now, please, and you'll make the best choice of your life. And you'll be God will welcome you into His kingdom. But if you don't want to go to go to heaven, don't pray this prayer. If you want to go to heaven, pray this prayer. Now this prayer doesn't save you; it's a promise that you make to God, and you keep your promise; He keeps His. Okay, so please pray, dear God, forgive me, a sinner. I'm truly sorry for sinning against You, a holy God. But I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again after three days I repent for my sins right now and I turn away willingly from my religion to follow only you my Lord Jesus this I promise you for the rest of my life thank you my Lord for forgiving me and saving me from hell make me the person you want me to be in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Now, welcome to God's River family if you prayed that prayer you made the best choice of your life Okay, so you do your best with God's help. Start reading your Bible, one chapter a day, in the New Testament, the Gospel of John. And it cleanses you and God speaks to you. And it makes you stronger every day, every day, every day. You must read it every day. You get faith of, with God, faith with God, stronger and stronger. But every day you don't read the Bible, week and week. So read your Bible, one chapter a day for three months. And then after three months, try Two chapters for the next nine months. One in the Old Testament, one in the New, to give you a balanced spiritual diet. Number two out of four. Number two, lift up your holy hands, talk to God like this. Do not do the upside down cross. It's a mockery, it's an insult to holy God if you were a Roman Catholic. Now you're born again. You're born again, you're a child of God, your name's in the book of life. You're heaven bound and not hell bound any longer. And so then point others to Jesus. It's the most loving thing you can do. We mustn't allow our loved ones to go to hell. Isn't that right, Chris? Mm -hmm. We mustn't allow our loved ones to go to hell. So point them to Jesus and go to a born-again church for the rest of your life so that you can grow in the things of the God of the Bible. So welcome to God's River family. You made the best church of your life. Just do your best with God's help. Amen? Amen. God bless you real good. This is Pastor John. Fishman Cromwell and Chris signing off for today. See you next week. Hallelujah. Praise God.